You are welcome to the review of the Open Heavens Daily Devotional today, February 8, 2021. The topic before us is a time to flee. We'll be considering as a second part to the first part that was started of yesterday. But let us pray. Our Father and our Lord, we worship and exalt your most holy name. We thank you for the privilege to study your word. We thank you for the notes of your son. Our Father in the Lord, Pastor Enoch Adejari Adeboe, we ask that indeed Holy Spirit will teach us yourself and our lives will not remain the same even after this session. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' mighty and holy name we have prayed. Amen. You are welcome once again. It's the review of the Open Heavens Daily Devotional today, February 8th. I'll be looking at the second part of the topic, A Time to Flee quickly look into our Bible reading for the day. Genesis 29, 39, verse 7 to 12. Genesis chapter 39, verse 7 to 12. I'll be reading from the King James Version. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and said, Lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wotted not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. Now then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God. And it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day, and he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. May the Lord bless the reading of his and hearing of his word in Jesus' name. Uh, we will be speaking about this text, but I want us to look at the memory verse for today as well, and then we'll discuss it everything together. The memory verse is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. And it reads, Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord, out of a pure heart. If we look at the Bible reading for today, and and we also look at the memory verse, we'll see, we'll note something that is common to both, and it's a fleeing. Here, Paul was advising Timothy, and as of course, the, us Christians, to flee lusts to flee youthful lusts and then he advised on what we should follow after righteousness faith charity peace and we should do this with those who are calling upon god from a pure heart now if we look at the story that we had read and we saw what joseph faced and it's interesting to note that the temptation that was put before him was something that kept coming on a daily basis. So it wasn't a case of a one-off. And when he came to a crescendo, he, he was trapped. He was, the scripture says that he was caught. She caught him and he had to flee. One number of things that we would see from there. Number one, Joseph was clear in his mind about the order of things. He knew God was above all and he knew that his master had put him in charge of things in the house when he had put him above every other person except the master. It's interesting to note that Joseph even realized that he was not subject to the wife of the master. So it was not an order that was coming from the correct quarters, from the right quarters. Where I'm driving that is this. The Holy Spirit is available for us Christians to be clear, to clearly show us what 
and what not to do. And when it comes to things that have to be, that we have to run away from, the only way to escape would be to flee. Fleeing connotes escaping from danger, identifying things that we know will ruin us. Now, the proposition that was made to Joseph to lie with his master's wife was clearly a dangerous one that he knew would destroy him. Because the woman who was even making the proposition was someone that was beneath him, even in the order of things. We see as our Father and the Lord says in his, in his writing here, that whenever we suspect anything at all would affect our relationship with God or would offend God, then it's important that we note that these are things that we flee from, not walk away from. Another thing I'd like to call our attention to, in the verse 10 of our Bible reading, it was said by King, as King James put it, that, and it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he akined not unto her, to lie by her, or to be with her. So to lie with her would have been to sleep with her, to commit adultery or fornication, as the case may be with her. But then it's even going for that to say, or be with her. Because a lot of times we look at this and we say, okay, so he did not, he refused, he rejected the offer. But how about us looking at the fact that he also rejected being with her? Now, this, I believe, is a word for someone. Because there are quite a number of things that come to us and we know they are dangerous. And but we decide, okay, we will not do it, but we will stay with it. So Joseph refused to lie with her and refused to be with her. Because being with her eventually would have led to the, the end that he, he, he knew he had to flee from. Our Father the Lord called out a, a scripture as well in Proverbs 22, 14 that reads, The mouth of strange women is a deep pit. He that is abode of the Lord shall fall therein. Saying that when the Lord wants to destroy a man, he would make him to go into adultery or fornication. See, the choice of word, destruction. But whenever we are fleeing anything that we know would offend God, as a matter of fact, we are, do, we are not doing God a favor. What we are doing is we are doing ourselves a favor. We are doing our life, our future a favor. So brethren, it's important that we flee sexual immorality of every kind. And I can liken being with her. You know, we've differentiated between Joseph lying with her and being with her. I can like him being with her to things like you watching pornography and say, well, I mean, I'm not actually committing the act. But that is you staying in the corridor of the act. And as a matter of fact, Jesus Christ has said that if you've committed this sin in your heart, look on the woman lustfully, you've already done it. And I can tell you it's even beyond just adultery and fornication. The moment we are regarding iniquity in our hearts, the scripture says that the Lord will not hear us. Hmm. So why would we then want to play with what we allow into our hearts? As we round off, I'll share the story that our Father and the Lord wrote in here of a pastor who was who had an illicit affair with his secretary. You know, it was reported, and and the wife reported him and. Um, our uh, Father and the Lord counseled him and said, you need to stop this. In short, you need to lay her off. He did this and eventually he still hired her back. And they went off to start a ministry and things just went southwards from there. He lost the ministry. He, he lost his home. And he was even later on discovered that the children the woman had for her own husband, because she was married, turned out to even have been two of them had turned out to be this pastor's children. What a messy affair. This could not be the plan of God for anyone. This could not be the plan of God for your life. So in short, it's important that we note that as we flee things that offend the Almighty God, it is for our own good. It is for our own lives. I leave us with this key point that says, Adultery and fornication are not things to joke with at all. If you have ever done it in the past, cry to God to forgive you today. And if it so happens that you've not given your life to Christ, 
yet or probably you have and you for some had fallen out of the faith please join me in this prayer so you could just state your allegiance and your commitment back to God and if you're doing it for the first time as well so you could be welcomed into the family of God and say our father and Lord I confess all my trespasses and anything I've done that has that would or might have offended you I ask that you please forgive me cleanse my sins with the blood of Jesus write my name in the book of life draw me back unto you O Lord in Jesus mighty name we have prayed Amen. Congratulations if you said that prayer. I can assure you that your name has been written in the book of life. And we will be praying with you and we will ensure that your details that you will be sharing with us will be shared with our Father and the Lord as well. We will be praying for you. Thank you very much for your time. We look forward to another refreshing time with you tomorrow. God bless you.